before we start, I just need to address the issues. Stringgate, 2019. People complain about my strings that I don't trim them because I embody rock and roll and I don't give a flying fuck. I can make all this go away. If you become a patron of the channel, the links are below. Uh, basically, you can just throw me $2 a month or whatever. I'll trim my strings if I reach 100 patrons. Right now, I'm on something like 39 patrons, something like that. So uh, if you, as you can see on this scientific diagram, I will trim strings for food because I'm going broke, bitch. My all-time favorite personality, the Rick Mail. He and Aid Edmondson are the biggest influences of me. It's almost like I was raised by them because I was so obsessed. They were like my babysitters because I watched every single thing they ever did. Bought weird books, How to Be a Complete Bastard. Terrible video games, which I played more than anybody else, even though it was the worst game. Probably even worse than E.T. A poor kid growing up, you know, not, no money. I would buy it if it was anything to do with the young ones. Bottom, bloody uh, comic strip. I, I got the lot. So why why am I talking about the young ones? Why am I talking about comedians on a guitar-based music channel? Well, they influenced me musically. The first real heavy metal that I ever really got experience with beyond, you know, hearing it in popular culture was on the young ones. And it was uh, Motorhead. They had bands like Madness. I was a mod at the time. When I saw Madness, I was like, what? Because when I was a kid, I was into uh, The Who and The Small Faces, things like that. When I saw what rock and roll was via The Damned and bands like that that were on The Young Ones, it, it, it blew my mind. I was like, this is a scene I want to get into. And I think that show probably made me want to pick up the guitar, you know? So it's a huge influence on me. And people don't know the depth of Ed Edmondson. He was obsessed with it as well, like I am. Not many people know this, but Ed Edmondson, uh, he played Vivian, the punk, who was so obsessed, it, it, later on, when he was like my age, he ended up going on a sh TV show called Mastermind. They pick a subject that they're an expert on, and then they get, you know, tough questions. And it was a big black chair, very serious program. Ed Edmondson went on there, non-ironically, and his subject was... And your specialist subject... The Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols in two minutes, starting now. In front of which London building did the Pistols sign their contract with A&M on the 10th of March, 1977? Buckingham Palace. Correct. Which band had Malcolm McLaren been managing before he managed the Sex Pistols? New York Dolls. Yes. What was the name of the programme chaired by Bill Grundy on which the Pistols swore on live television on the 1st of December, 1976? Today. Correct. In which Yorkshire town did the band play on Christmas Day, 1977, their last UK gig, before they split up the following year? Huddersfield. Yes. John Lydon's audition to join the Pistols consisted of him miming along to a track by Alice Cooper in Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood's shop on the King's Road. Which track was it? I'm 18 by Alice Cooper. Yeah. He went on to be the main guy in Bad News, which was a, which actually started shooting before Spinal Tap. So they kind of came out with the same idea at the same time. But uh, I th think they actually beat Spinal Tap to the punch when it comes to the actual, you know, start of production. So Bad News is a band, a mockumentary or a rockumentary, if you will, on a terrible band that is just completely in denial, you know, of their skills, things like that. And if you have not seen Bad News, you have to watch it. I'll, all links will be in the description of all these uh, performances and, you know, Bad News, and because some people might know what the hell I'm talking about. But if you're here, you know. If you're here watching, you get it, of how amazing Bad News was. And not just taking the piss. Their songs were good. Warriors of Genghis Khan, I actually did a cover version of that.
some of the lyrics are so hilarious, but the guitar and the tone and the songs are fucking awesome. Like genuinely awesome. I, I had the Bad News album. It's something that you miss, you know, with album covers where you look at it and everything. If you look at that album cover, you will see a new thing every time you look at it. It's just epic. Everything they do is epic. It's, I don't know how they did it, but at the time they just captured the essence of punk, rock, rebellion, young, you know, energy, sex, drugs, rock and roll. They, that's what they were. And you can't fake it. You cannot fake their, their deep love for the style of comedy, you know, and they would take piss out of the old school comedians and the old, uh, you know, situation comedies and things like that. And this is how much people loved them, right? The Damned, the Damned hated each other. They'd broken up. They actually banded back together just because they loved the young ones so much and they wanted to be, you know, one of the bands on the show. They got together just for the young ones. And get this, they wrote the song Video Nasty for the young ones. A performance, a new song, and uh, getting back together. This is the damned, right? They were the greatest punk band of all time, in my opinion. And then, straight after the show, they went to the pub. They had another argument and fucking fighting, and all of a sudden they broke up again. So, rock and roll, dude. <laughs> but, you know, it, rock and roll does unite people. It's it's something that, like, I don't thank the, my viewers enough, because, you know, people think that you're just pandering and the rest of it. But the comments and the people who love my channel, they are fucking loyal, dude. And it, it's... I feel it. I feel like the the connection that we have. And I I look at my subs. Right? I always complain about my subs. I only got, you know, because I've been essentially blacklisted on YouTube because I cover certain so certain subjects. You mentioned church burnings and you mentioned black metal and you mentioned murder and this and that. It's like the, the algorithm is like, no, do not go here. So nobody recommends me. You know, I, I rarely get recommended unless you're really into the dark stuff on YouTube where my face might pop up. Even though I have only a few subscribers, my view ratio to subscribers is like double the, the average, you know, because there is something about the essence of music and rock and comedy and the crack and, you know, I don't mean crack cocaine is a British term for having a, you know, it's look it up. So your homework, right, is to check out the description and you can watch the bad news one bad news too the first one is a little bit dated bad news you know the first one but you'll still if you're a musician especially an older musician you'll get half of the stuff that's going on there because uh it is a chore to be a musician at even when you're a good one even when you have your shit together so when you don't it, it just sums it up but there's two episodes you need to watch one is called bad news the other one is called more bad news and also obviously we watch the young ones right now bottom they actually went on this is the cult of the the cult that they had, right? Was so great in the UK. They were actually like superstars, but they ended up going on Monsters of Rock, Donington, the biggest gig in Britain. They a joke band were on stage getting shit thrown at them, and uh, it was glorious. So that's it. It was a huge influence on me musically. The the bands that they had on there were fantastic, and uh, maybe I'll put together a montage of whatever I can upload on here so that's it thanks to my patrons of tongue i really appreciate what you just did richard p uh, it means a hell of a lot and i really appreciate that very generous donation and uh but thanks to richard p uh jm uh corliss v and buck toe truck and manfred p so really appreciate that also lyndon h Thanks for that as well. Uh, you know, Jen, you guys are amazing. For such a small channel, you know, everything, just my regular subs, uh, the Facebook group guys and pay, my patrons. I'm honestly, I, I'm, sometimes I'm blown away by how, how cool you guys are and how generous. Because you know, like YouTube has, you know, it, it's really, really crushing on YouTube to know that, I'm not saying, you know, my channel's amazing or anything, but I think when you get shadow banned on YouTube, it's it's frustrating and it's like, why am I bothering? And it's so frustrating. So to get the comments and the subs and the shares and the donations and the rest of it, it really genuinely does, it keeps me going. Because if it was, 
if I didn't have the interaction, you know, because YouTube are removing comments on some channels and all sorts of shits going on. If you're if you're in a certain political side of the fence, you 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 get not just demonetized, but uh, there's all sorts of shit going on in the background which you might not know about, which is designed to make us give up so that you know old media can get their grip. You know, NBC, CBS, all the old media they don't want YouTubers to actually progress. So. It's a, uh, it's, yeah, it kind of, it sucks. It fucking, it sucks because the good stuff, the young ones would not be allowed on YouTube. The bottom certainly would not be allowed on YouTube because, you know, the punk rock wouldn't be allowed on YouTube. It would be shadow banned as well. All right, chaps, you've been awesome. And uh, lots of videos coming up soon. And uh, that's it. Have a good one. Circle of tone. Stringy, 2019. Chill. Do you want to see something annoying? Shall I leave that on for the whole video? <laughs> oh no, make it stop. What have I done? <laughs> Maybe I have to leave it on. All right, off. Off works, right? <sighs> so, why are we why are we here?